Okay, so if you were traveling Texas, say, I don't know, 200 years ago, well, it would be absolutely critical for you to stop and find a spring for some water. Because if you didn't, well, you were gonna die. And while traveling Texas may be a little bit easier nowadays, well, we're still heading toward the springs. Only now we're looking for museums, some food, some big cows, and just maybe the biggest bass in Texas. Sulfur Springs! <laughs> Whoa! Almost ate it. Oh, This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Sulphur Springs is right here in the middle of the beautiful North Texas Hills, about 80 miles from Dallas along I-20. So if you're like me, the first thing you wondered is, are there any springs here? And the answer to that is not anymore as the springs done dried up when the city was built on top of them. But don't worry, as this town still flows with things to do, even if the list doesn't include swimming in some stinky sulfur water. All right, let's get this day trip started. Looks like we're arriving on the Sulfur Springs Square. Little red brick streets and old buildings. Doesn't exactly make right angles though. Here we go, woo! If I'm counting correctly, this square has exactly one, two, three, four, five. I think it actually has five sides, which would make it not a square, but a pentagon. And there's a lot of people out too. I love it when you find an old square that's still the heart of the city. The historic Sulphur Springs Pentagon is truly still the beating heart of town. The buildings are full of shops, the streets are full of people, and in the middle is the Hopkins County Courthouse. Constructed in 1894, it's considered by many to be one of the finest courthouses in all of Texas. They call this architecture Romanesque Revival. And while the courthouse definitely draws a lot of people, it's probably the courthouse lawn that attracts the most attention. I mean, look at this grass. This is like golf course quality stuff. Ah, soft grass. This lawn is used for countless events throughout the year. Personally, I like freestyle rolling best. Just leave me here. But if you prefer rules and structure in your free time, well then maybe you prefer chess. Chess! Why did I ever think my crew was capable of a sophisticated game? Oh well. Now another cool thing on the Sulphur Springs Pentagon is the art. And whether that's in a stunning veterans memorial like this one, or something a bit more modern like these mirrored glass cubes. But is it just art or something more functional? Maybe for human functions perhaps. I mean, look at this thing. What is it? Some wacky modern art installation? No. Maybe a, a redesign of the TARDIS from Doctor Who? Oh no, it's way better. Look, come on. Step inside, my friends. It's a public restroom with a view. <laughs> so this glass cube is actually a two-way mirror. So the people outside cannot see you in here. But from inside, it's a potty with a view. No way. <laughs> Isn't this thing nuts? That's crazy. Look, 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 look. Look, look, look. look. look there's Todd and Kelly right there. They cannot see us. But they can wave because they can hear us. Isn't that crazy? That's nuts. And if a show's going on, you're not gonna miss a beat. You're gonna see the whole thing. These potties of glass debuted in 2012 and have since been named one of the best restrooms in America. Now some of you may be thinking, ain't no way. But as long as the light's brighter outside than inside, it's completely private. But it's definitely not for those who suffer from public restroom stage fright. However, I am not one of them. You know, while we're here, I think I might have a little bit of a business of my own. Why don't y'all just, just scat along? What? Just give me about 10 minutes. Ten Back minutes. out here. Yeah, that's right, my friend. 10 minutes. Anybody have the newspaper? Sulphur Springs Times? Anything? All right. Well, my phone. Just give me a couple minutes. Ah, who am I kidding? Even if the 
crew physically can't see me, this is just weird. But this does prove something about the Day Tripper crew. We rock the potty. I've got to move on. But speaking of potty people, check out this guy a half a block over. His hat says he's a potato, but that's open to interpretation, isn't it? And despite some recent attempts to flush him away, Mr. Potato is here to stay as a downtown mascot. And while his potatoes are delicious, I'm headed to a place with a different sort of mascot-inspired food. It's called Lou Viney's Restaurant and Pub. The blues playing frogs may have you thinking New Orleans fair, but Lou Viney's food actually spans a much bigger range, covering everything from seared tuna to buffalo chicken nachos, which is exactly where I'm gonna start as I sit down with owners John and Mary Beth Reed. That was good. You like that taste? I love it. I mean, what's not to love about chips and queso and then throw in some buffalo Nothing hot sauce? Every dish is really done from scratch. Okay. From scratch ingredients. We're yeah. talking down to the raw ingredients. I mean, y'all are making y'all's own. Yep. Glazes and yes. everything. Yeah. yeah. There's a bottle of whiskey for the whiskey glaze in the back. <laughs> yeah. so. We make our own potato chips every morning, too. <laughs> <laughs> scratch made food served on a platter of small town charm. It's your classic neighborhood pub. Really. Okay. We don't have Norm the bartender here, but other than that, <laughs> everyone does know your name. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we both love to cook, which okay. is really what kind of got us interested. Uh huh. And then when this was for sale, we thought, well, we'll try it. Mm -hmm. It was a leap of faith for two self-proclaimed computer nerds. So okay. we're both IT people. IT folks. Um, yeah. And this we're was our new adventure. Yeah. It makes sense. I mean, nachos are sort of like a supercomputer. <laughs> <laughs> with Right? <laughs> With Lou Viney's, they went from the supercomputer to the super sandwich. And one that's so popular, it's named after the high school mascot, the Wildcat. Well, it's actually kind of like a Philly cheesesteak on steroids. Oh, so, okay. You know, your beef and your onions and peppers and sauteed those and put cheese on it, as well as um, a homemade coleslaw that we make, and then we top it with french fries. That's awesome. As you see, this place is a little hard to pigeonhole, but that doesn't really matter, as long as the food ends up in my pie hole. Nice. <laughs> this thing is a beast. Does any one man need this many french fries? Wait, 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 wait. let me just see here. Ah, just for you. So somehow, I have to close this sandwich in order to get said sandwich into my mouth. Mm. Oh yeah. I like it. You know, a lot of Philly cheesesteaks don't have sort of a sweet tang to them. But this one does because it's got all that homemade coleslaw in it. Like many of the things I love thrown together on one sandwich. I love a place like this. You know, it's right in the heart of town. It's packed full of the local people. This is their food. This is their sandwich. I mean, it's named after the high school mascot for Pete's sake. All right? Doesn't get much more local than that. Yes, the Wildcats run this city, all 15,000 of them, making Sulphur Springs a good-sized small town. Ooh, that lunch was good. I think I got something stuck in my teeth, though. Let me just see if we can... Oh, you whoa. You teamers! I, 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 I wasn't! I wasn't! I'm sorry! I'm sorry, man! I'm sorry, man! I'm sorry, man. Shame on you! Shame on you! You're a crazy old lady! Go. Get out of here! Remember, those ain't just mirrors, and someone may be in there. I don't get it! Ugh. All in all, Sulphur Springs is just good Texas. Now the only population that rivals the wild cats of Sulphur Springs is the cows, as this town is a magnet for the dairy business. Some fresh milk sounds great right now. So for our next stop, let's go milk it. We're going to need a bigger bucket. Luckily, pulling the milk ain't our job. We're just here to learn about it at the Southwest Dairy Museum, dedicated to everything it takes to bring milk from utter to utterly delicious. Yes, yes, thank you. One for us? Yeah, I need a dessert. But getting ice cream hasn't always been this easy. So let's learn a little bit with museum director, Carolyn McKinney. It's exciting to know what they did back in the early days of dairying and how hard they worked. 
Yeah. Right. I think we all take our glass of milk in the morning for granted now. Yes, we do. We do. We think it comes from the grocery store when actually <laughs> it comes from the cow. It's brought in in pails and mom gets the milk and she separates the milk out. So from the raw product, that raw milk, we're getting the butter, we're getting the cream, we're getting the milk, that we're getting correct. the butter milk as well. As well, yes. Okay. To follow the hoofs is to follow the path to dairy enlightenment and to look back in time. This is basically the first commercial butter churn because it's so much larger than your just your normal little butter churn that you have at And you home. don't have to sit there like no, this all day. you don't have to it do that. It churns itself. That is correct. You lost your daily bicep routine but gained hours of extra time. Man, I'm learning a lot here, like how a milk separator works. This is what sits inside the cream separator. Okay. It spins at about 6,000 revolutions per minute. Oh, wow. Super fast. The lower spout is where they're getting the skim milk from. The upper spout is where the cream comes out. And so so this is the skim milk one? That is the skim milk. All right, milk. then I'll just take this one this to drink is right the here. cream. That's why I want the fatty, good, healthy <laughs> stuff right here. Yum, 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 yum. Hey, milk does a body good. Don't you agree, Mr. Skeleton? His name is Cal C. Yum. Get it? Dairy jokes. Oh, look at this. We get to milk old Betsy. Ooh. Wow. Betsy's a pretty good milk producer here. No. Oh. You can actually uh, experience what it's like inside a cow milker. Here we go. Hope I get my fingers back. Ooh. Not bad. It's kind of kind of soothing actually. Oh, I'm getting in touch with my inner heifer. It's amazing how much the dairy industry has changed over the past generation. Thank you, dairy men and women. Here's a toast just for you. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. While we're exploring museums, here's another I want to show you. It's not as tasty as the Dairy Museum, but there's not another like it in Texas, and it's hidden away in the public library. It's the Leo Sinclair Music Box Collection, and I know that may seem boring to some, but hang with me here, because you've never seen music boxes like these. That looks like a miniature Disneyland ride. I mean, the bird's beak moves, the tail flutters, it turns its head. And, and realize some of these are at least 100, if not more, years old. Wow. This is John Sellers, city councilman and historian. A lot of these just look like sculptures. Yes. But they yes. actually play. Yeah, everything, I mean, that's what's so interesting about it. Everything has a music box on it, no matter what the item is. Hey. I'll show you how this one works. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. This collection contains over 350 music boxes. Some of these spin, some dance, some even smoke. You could put a cigarette on there and then as you wind it up, it would actually smoke. Well, of course, we can't do that in here. Yeah. But <laughs> so this one down here is about 170 years old, built on, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Look at the way the water yeah. flows down. You see, he's hitting him on the head, but he, he won't drink. <laughs> That's right. Drink, donkey, drink! <laughs> to think of the amount of work that went into oh, that. Yes. I mean, that I just picture this old man like Geppetto, right? right. Making Pinocchio right. with this little skilled craftsman sitting in Germany building these things one by one. Right. right. Mr. Sinclair was a World War I vet and started this collection in 1919 when he was gifted this musical chair by the Queen of Belgium. During World War II, he served in the VA helping wounded vets recover by building music boxes. And they would use different items you wouldn't necessarily think about, like this gun, depicting a shotgun wedding. <laughs> yeah. This is truly art, art with a soundtrack. Uh, what's happening inside that box right now just kind of blows my mind. Yes. I, that's kind of mesmerizing, it's like hypnotizing mm, yes, almost. It really like, is. And they all have their own story. This one was in Frank Capra's Hollywood classic, You Can't Take It With You, and these were once owned by the Marx Brothers. And the oldest piece of all of them is this cross, worn by a sailor during the sinking of the Spanish Armada. That's just a great example of how priceless this collection really is. 
That's amazing. Thank you, John. Thank, Thank you, Jay. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of makes me want to take a nap now. <laughs> Definitely. Getting, getting sleepy. As you see, no matter the town, there's always something to find. But now I think it's time to hit the road for a small jaunt through the woods in search of water. Some very famous water. About 20 minutes south of town, there's a place called Lake Fork. Pretty much all of the big bass, and I'm talking the really big bass, to be caught in Texas have come out of this lake. And so it attracts fishermen from all over the United States. Land the big one. The record book's kind of big one. It's the promised land of largemouth, yielding seven of the top 10 bass ever caught in Texas, including the biggest at 18.18 .18 pounds. That's a big bass right there. And to help us catch our own Big Bertha bass is local guide Mike McFarland. Well, I've never fished Lake Fork, but I, I've obviously heard the legend of Lake Fork. Yes, sir. Amazing place. It could be a five-year-old boy with a Snoopy rod, or it can be a pro out here who knows what he's doing. Either one stands the same chance to catch a giant fish. It, well, let's go get one Yes, of them. sir. I'm excited. Right, let's thanks. get you out there. My buddy Travis is tagging along because he's a fisherman, which means he's always wanted to fish Fork, and more hooks in the water means more chances at the big one. Yeah, you know, this lake, there is no lake in the world like it. A place where you can come catch a big fish any time of the year. Yeah. And if you can come out and catch 40 of those in a day, that's crazy. Crazy indeed. And out here, a bass under 10 pounds, well, that's just a little baby bass. You you know you're fishing for a big fish yeah. when a guy ties on something like that. Look at that. That so looks like the fish you catch on some lakes yeah. in yeah. Texas. What you can do is just cast it out. Okay. So one ounce weight, it's going to go to the bottom and reel it back slow. Yeah. So nice long cast and hang on because if they hit it, it's going to hurt you. You're either going to get your arm hurt or your heart broke. <laughs> oh, it's <harnesses>. Yeah. <laughs> the next biggest bait is you. Yeah, that's you right. You out there. Yeah. Partnering with a local guide is definitely the way to go. They know this lake from bank to bottom and can teach you more than you ever knew you didn't know. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in my drop shot and I'm going to spoon with you. All right. That sounds terrible. I'm going to spoon with you. Sounds terrible. See, there's footage for you. There's, now you, there's some camera footage for you. Yes, we are using spoons on Lake Fork. Ironic, I know. Wonder what a spork might catch. Reel first. Okay. Reel so that you're tight, and then just smooth. Take the rod, sweep it up. Keep going. No reel. reeling. No more oh. reeling. And then drop it back down. This entire lake is 39 miles long. Under the water is a twisted network of stumps and down trees that those big bass love to hide in. And they're down there, it's their world, and they are there. When they want to eat, you can't stop it. And that applies to the crappie, the white bass, and the countless other fish that inhabit Lake Fork, any of which I would love to bite my hook about now. Chet, you working that spoon over there? Yeah. Working it, working it. Working it, baby. You got a fish on? Yeah, sir, come on. Come on in, baby. Just keep the rod up high, keep the rod up high. Sure, fish on? Oh, it had. No, oh, yeah. I pulled it. So when you feel them smack it, you still got to yeah. set the hook a little bit. Yeah, I think that's what happened. I do love fishing, even if I'm not very good at it. 12 o'clock, we're supposed to go to lunch. Oh, no. Too much. Too much? Too much. Oh. Look, look, let me show you something. I broke your pole. So it was just strained too much. Don't worry about it. It's part of the business. <laughs> I got to stop working See what out. I, you. Is that, I, you know? I told you you would either have a broken arm or a broken heart. In this case, I have a broken heart. <laughs> I'm, just oh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll lay off the protein it's, shakes. Oh, oh man, you know, I, I had all that milk this morning and you know that just... Now the epic bass fishing here didn't happen by accident. Texas Parks and Wildlife does amazing research to keep this place stocked and healthy. But there's also the responsibility on every fisherman to practice catch and release. However, one must catch to catch and release. Fresh, this is called a tree pounder. This is a, 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 tree, a tree pounder. Not a three pounder, it's a tree. You gotta pounder. throw this one back? Yes, we gotta throw this one back. <laughs> now Mike did invite two other guides, Sam Cotton and Brian Jackson. And despite all their differing opinions on lucky spots and proper baits, they all seem to agree that this is the spot of the moment. Look around. One of us is gonna pull up a big one in just a second. Give it a second. I hope it's me. Just like that. Look. Whoa. You got a fish? Really? Ooh, it is a big oh. one. Big fish. Oh. Big fish. Nice. Big fish. Yeah, that's Sweet. a good six pound, seven pound fish right there. Man. And that's what you come to Lake Fork for. That's what I was hoping you were going to get. <laughs> but hey, sometimes hey. it's fishing, man. Sometimes that's right. it's fishing. Good job, brothers. Good job. Well, that's fishing out here. Sometimes you get the fish. Sometimes you just get fork.
But hey, that's fishing. Well, I didn't catch the big one on Lake Fork, but I gotta say, I definitely caught the bass fever out here. That's why people get hooked on fishing. I'm just gonna have to come back. The good news is that it doesn't matter if you catch 100 fish or no fish, because everybody catches dinner at AJ's Fish House. The golden brown fried variety of fish, which is perhaps my favorite species. And this is perhaps the best deep fried fisherman in all of East Texas. Andy Johnson, AJ, yes, eh? Hey? You betcha. You answer to both? That's, that's pretty creative, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that okay. took us a long time, time to figure, figure that, that out, mm. yeah. <laughs> so how long has AJ's been around? We've been around uh, 15 and a half years. We started out in a building that seated 94 people. So now we seat 450. 450. Yeah. And how big's this town? Probably four or five hundred. Okay. Somewhere along that so line. So if you I wanted was... to have a, the entire town in here for a party, you could do it. Probably could. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Probably could. This is technically Alba, Texas, and there's a whole Alba's worth of people here tonight that have come from all over North and East Texas for a date with AJ. So this yeah. is a destination. Yeah. Catfish joint, yeah. huh? My wife and I lived in Arkansas. That's what we used to do on Saturday nights. You know, two other couples, we'd get in a truck and drive 40, 50 miles to eat catfish. Go eat catfish. And that's what we do. So, so that explains all this Razorback stuff around then, huh? Because yeah. I see this, yeah. and I see these people wearing these goofy <laughs> hog hats, and I'm like, oh. If they have a birthday, they have to wear the hog hat if they're going to get sang to. <laughs> Or if they walk in with an Aggie ring and oh, say, yeah. I'm going to oh, well, serve Aggie. you, you got to... Aggies, LSU Tigers, they sit in the back. We okay. don't even allow them up front. <laughs> well, show me these goods here, uh, would you? Come on. Catfish is special. That's, that's your That's, that's what your we thing. do. It's the that, catfish. That's, yeah. And we're only open 18 hours a week, and we'll generally go through 1,500 pounds of catfish. Wow. So We've nothing. got a particular cornmeal that we use that is very fine. It gives it a lighter flavor and a lighter taste. The cornmeal doesn't overbear it. Sure, sure. The buffet is a smorgasbord of fried deliciousness. Chicken, shrimp, and more. So it's time to eat. I should probably start with a salad. Ah, who am I kidding? I want fried catfish. Why even fool around with the green stuff, all right? You're just wasting stomach space. Tonight, I shall only eat things that come in shades of golden brown. Some of these. Yes, keep them coming. Oh, he's a hungry boy. Is... Something to wallow in after that not exactly don't rub it in, all right? Outing on the water. Don't rub it in. Oh, look, one oh. spilled for me. Oh, okay. I'll let you eat that one thing. That's your dinner, though. Oh. This is Mount Fried right here, and I'm about to climb to the top of it. Mm. There's something about it that takes me back to being a little kid. I don't know why. That's so good. So these people aren't just locals. I mean, these people are driving in for a 50, 60 mile radius. And this is why. Well, one thing that you need well, to have. No! Actually, I have. You get that cursed thing oh, away from me! That's Just what I love to see. A Texan in a hog hat. Now, that, that's the good side of it. I won't sue E. I don't care what you say, I will not sue E. Woo pig sue it! Oh, no. There oh, we go. No. Woo pig! I'm done. What a day. You can come here hunting for the big one. Be it the fishy kind, the bovine kind, or the sandwich kind. Or you can come here hunting for the unusual. Be it the musical kind, the pentagon kind, or the potty kind. But no matter why you come here, just make sure you do, because this is what day trips are made of. All good things must come to an end, and this day has. So I will see all y'all out on the road. Bye, Codios, amigos. I think it actually has five sides, which would make it not a square, but a pentagram. Oh, a pentagram? <laughs> What? It's the secret dark side of Sulphur Springs. We don't have a square, we have a pentagram. I love a place like this. It's, it's right in the heart of town. It's packed full they of are. the locals. One more time. They walk back and forth behind my shot. They ruin this show. <laughs> what? No, I'm kidding. I love locals. She ain't giving like she used to. Worried about the children. The bets don't give, the children won't live. Give, that's a give. The baby's gotta live. You're being a little rough with her, Chet. I don't think she dried up. Oh, this ain't good. Maybe I can trade her for some magic beans. Then we could all go up into the clouds. Wow. Am, I, am I mashing up enough fairy tales? Yes, <laughs> totally are.
Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy, y'all. Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. <laughs> Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, con Dios, amigas. <laughs>